Good afternoon, Madden 25 gamers. In today's episode of Defensive Scheme of the Week, we're going to introduce you guys to the Nickel 335 Bear that can be found in the 46 Defensive Playbook. Today we're going to be going over our base play, how I like to run it in-game, uh, and we're going to show you a couple of different setups that you can use uh, to, to really use this base play to the highest, highest level of effectiveness. It comes from the Big Nickel Bear, and the play that we're going to be using um, is the Storm Red. Remember that this play can be found in the 46 Defensive Playbook. Now what we like to do with this play is every Every single time when we're in the 46, or excuse me, every single time we're in the nickel, big nickel bear formation, every time we come out, we're going to base line, we're going to crash our defensive line to the left. Every single time, no matter what play we call. In this scenario, we're just going to put the middle linebacker in a hook zone. We're going to user control him. He's our user player. We can do whatever we want. We're going to sit in this little A gap right here with him every single time as well. We're just going to hold L2, and at the snap of the ball, we're free to go wherever we want. Snap go. And you see we're going to generate that left, that wide left pressure uh, at the quarterback. Let's take a look at what happens in instant replay. So this is our pressure setup. And you see we're just going to send that quick left side pressure. And we're able to use the control whoever we want. We see the post is open here, so we go jump on that. By the time the quarterback sacked, this coverage out of Storm Red is just very effective. can jump a lot of different routes. And uh, you see that it does a very good job there. All right, now we're going to take a look at the right side pressure setup. What we like to do when we're sending the right side pressure, uh, obviously you thought maybe we could crash our D-line to the right maybe and do it that way. Unfortunately, in this formation, um, it doesn't work like that. As you see there, we tried to do that and it does not work. Uh, it's not effective. And I, I, I've been messing with the 3 5 on and off all season, trying to figure out how it can be versatile and flexible with it. Well, now we're going to show you today. So like to base the line, we like to crash our D-line to the left. Next thing we like to do is we're going to grab onto Ross here. And we're going to place him into a quarterback, or excuse me, a hot routed purple zone. We're then going to globally re-blitz our right of screen linebacker. And then we're going to put our middle linebacker. We're going to put him in a yellow zone, but we're going to user control him as if he was in a purple zone. Okay, so here we go. Let's snap the ball. You're going to see right edge pressure. Remember to crash your defensive line to the left as it's the generic setup for everything we do from this formation. So here we're just going to run out to the right side flats. And you see you're going to get that right edge pressure. So real quick, let's take a look at that instant replay and see what um, we see what this play looks like from a quarterback standpoint. So the quarterback is going to see that you're going to send that right edge pressure. Cool part about this is it's going to act like the flats are open, but you're going to sprint out there with your user control player. If he tries to throw a corner route or something, you're in the vicinity of the area. At this point, right here, uh, right there, quarterback can no longer throw the football. And as you see, where are you going to throw that ball against the Storm Red? One of the things I really like about this formation, and especially this play, it covers all the all the general and generic routes very effectively without having to make hot route of adjustments. Okay, guys, and the last setup I want to give you today uh, is our basic generic two-way pressure setup out of this play. I like to base a line, I like to crash our D-line to the right, or excuse me, I like to crash our D-line to the left, globally re-blitz our right of screen linebacker, and then we're going to put Roach in a hook zone. What I like to do is if you man align, you see that that safety hook zone is now going to go to the right. So now we're free to use or control the middle of the field. All right, so we like to man align, then baseline after we do the hook zone setup to Roach. And all we're going to do is we're just going to drop off into the middle of the field and try to use or someone. So we're going to act like we're sending the right pressure. Then we can jump back on the other side. And you see it's going to send two guys free at the quarterback. This is very effective, uh, especially when they start to block the running back. We're going to show you an example of that again in just a quick moment here. But you see, get that right and left side pressure at the quarterback. At this point, we actually made a mistake with the user control at the snap of the ball. We float out a little bit too quick. You need to hold just for like maybe just a split second, and then you can drop out. But here you see the pressure is pretty good at the quarterback. Now let's take a look at what they have. They block a running back. Um, so base line crash your line to the left, put Roach in a zone, man line, base line, and then reblitz that Ryan Becker on the right side of the screen. Your main priority here is that left side seam. Snap go, and here you see left side pressure still, even though they're blocking a running back. And let's take a look at what the quarterback's going to see uh, after the snap of the ball. He's going to think that he's got your blitz picked up now, but really, reality, you know, he's he's got pressure coming off his left side still. And really, and where, where are you going to throw the ball? I mean, maybe that corner out, but it's still going to be a dicey throw with me user controlling that sometimes and sometimes not. It's going to be very difficult. And then lastly, guys, I do want to show this against play action blocking. So uh, play action blocking is one of the most effective things that they can do. So they're going to block play action and they're going to block a running back. This for surely will stop any pressure you'll send this season. A lot of people think that, and uh, we're going to prove you wrong right here. We're going to set up that same double side pressure, and here you're going to see left side pressure still comes in. 
So that is very critical with this defense. It's one of the main reasons I like that so much. A lot of people think that play-action blocking is really effective, and it is very effective. But here you see, again, sending six guys, we are still going to get one guy free, even if they block a running back and call, call a play-action play. Thank you guys so much for watching this uh, introduction to the 335 and this base play. A lot to digest here, so be sure to come back tomorrow for some simpler defenses like the base man coverage and base zone coverage. And make sure you understand those and know how to use those setups so that you have them in your back of your head whenever you need them in a hot route, no huddle, no huddle situation. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoy the scheme of the week, be sure to retweet this on Twitter and also like this video on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support, and I appreciate every minute you guys spend watching my videos and also look forward to hearing feedback from you in the comments section. Thank you guys so much, and be sure to come back tomorrow for some more Scheme of the Week content.